Millard Fillmore, the 13th President of the United States, is often overshadowed by the more prominent figures of American history. But within the annals of the past, his presidency holds a unique place. His journey from humble beginnings to the highest office in the land, his critical role in the Compromise of 1850, and the challenges he faced during his presidency set the stage for a captivating exploration of a man who left a lasting mark on American history. Millard Fillmore's presidency was marked by both domestic and international challenges. The divisive issue of slavery and the passage of the Fugitive Slave Act brought the nation to the brink of civil war. In foreign affairs, Fillmore's administration negotiated the opening of Japan, reshaping diplomatic relations in the Far East. As we delve into this comprehensive exploration, we will uncover the complexities of Fillmore's leadership style, his involvement with the Know Nothing Party, and his personal life and interests beyond politics. Millard Fillmore's legacy is a tapestry of contradictions and controversies. While his presidency often receives mixed reviews from historians, there is much to learn from his tenure in office. Join us on this journey to rediscover the unspoken legacy of a president whose story is woven into the fabric of American history. Early Life and Political Beginnings Millard Fillmore, born on January 7, 1800, in Locke, New York, had a modest beginning. His upbringing on a frontier farm instilled in him the values of hard work and self-reliance which would shape his character throughout his life. The Fillmore family's financial struggles and their reliance on subsistence farming left a lasting impression on young Millard, who had to overcome numerous challenges to receive an education. Despite these obstacles, Fillmore's determination led him to study law and embark on a legal career. His early years as a lawyer in Buffalo, New York, marked the beginning of his political journey. He quickly gained recognition for his legal skills and became involved in local politics. Fillmore's entry into politics coincided with a time of great change and tension in the United States. The early 19th century was marked by debates over the expansion of slavery and the question of states' rights. Fillmore's political career began to take off as he aligned himself with the Whig Party, which opposed the policies of President Andrew Jackson. In 1832, Fillmore was elected to the New York State Assembly, where he gained valuable legislative experience. His political acumen and commitment to education reform made him a rising star in New York politics. As we explore the formative years of Millard Fillmore, we will see how his humble beginnings and dedication to public service shaped the man who would one day occupy the highest office in the land. The Compromise of 1850 the year 1850 was a critical turning point in American history, and Millard Fillmore found himself at the center of a storm of political turmoil. The issue of slavery had reached a boiling point, with the United States on the brink of civil conflict. Fillmore, who had ascended to the presidency after the untimely death of Zachary Taylor, faced the daunting task of managing the crisis. The Compromise of 1850, a series of legislative measures aimed at addressing the issue of slavery, was the most significant challenge of Fillmore's presidency. It included provisions such as the admission of California as a free state, the organization of the New Mexico and Utah territories with popular sovereignty on the issue of slavery, and the strengthening of the Fugitive Slave Act. Fillmore recognized the urgency of finding a solution to the sectional tensions that threatened to tear the nation apart. He was a staunch advocate for the compromise, believing that it was the only way to preserve the Union. The passage of the Compromise of 1850 was a testament to Fillmore's political skills, and his ability to navigate the treacherous waters of American politics. However, the Compromise of 1850 came at a great cost. The Fugitive Slave Act, which was part of the package, required citizens of free states to assist in the capture and return of escaped slaves. This provision was deeply unpopular in the North and led to violent clashes and a strong backlash against the law. Fillmore's decision to sign the act into law would be a point of controversy throughout his presidency. The Presidency of Millard Fillmore After the passage of the Compromise of 1850, Millard Fillmore embarked on a presidency marked by intense challenges and the weight of an increasingly divided nation. His tenure as the 13th President of the United States was defined by his efforts to implement the Compromise's provisions and maintain the delicate balance between North and South. Fillmore's presidency was marked by a commitment to economic development and a belief in the importance of internal improvements, including the construction of roads, canals, and the expansion of the telegraph system. He aimed to modernize the country and promote commerce, 
but his focus on these economic policies often overshadowed his stance on the pressing issue of slavery. The Fugitive Slave Act, which he was instrumental in passing as part of the Compromise of 1850, created significant controversy. Fillmore's enforcement of the act led to the arrest and return of escaped slaves in the North, causing outrage among abolitionists and further deepening the divide between the North and the South. His approach to the act, seen by some as overly zealous, contributed to his mixed historical reputation. Another notable event during Fillmore's presidency was the clayton bulwer Treaty of 1850, which laid the groundwork for the construction of a transoceanic canal through Central America. This treaty with the United Kingdom demonstrated Fillmore's dedication to expanding American influence globally, particularly in the Western Hemisphere. While Fillmore's presidency was marked by several significant actions and policies, it is perhaps his approach to the Compromise of 1850 and the Fugitive Slave Act that most define his time in office. His commitment to preserving the Union, even at the expense of enacting a deeply unpopular law in the North, illustrates the challenges and complexities he faced as a leader during a time of great upheaval in the United States. The Fugitive Slave Act One of the most enduring and divisive legacies of Millard Fillmore's presidency was his role in enforcing the Fugitive Slave Act of 1850. This controversial law, which was part of the Compromise of 1850, had profound implications for the nation's sectional tensions and marked a pivotal moment in the lead-up to the Civil War. The Fugitive Slave Act required citizens of free states to assist in the capture and return of escaped slaves, and it imposed severe penalties on those who refused to comply. It also denied alleged fugitives the right to a jury trial, and granted broad powers to federal commissioners responsible for enforcing the law. As a result, it generated significant opposition in the North, where anti-slavery sentiments were strong. Fillmore's role in enforcing the Fugitive Slave Act has been a source of both criticism and praise. He believed that upholding the law was essential to maintaining the delicate balance between North and South and preserving the Union. Fillmore, who was not known for strong pro-slavery views, nevertheless recognized the importance of compromise during a time of heightened sectional tensions. Under Fillmore's leadership, federal agents vigorously pursued escaped slaves in northern states. This led to several high-profile cases, such as the arrest and subsequent return of Anthony Burns, a fugitive slave, to Virginia. These events triggered widespread protests and heightened anti-slavery sentiment in the North. The enforcement of the Fugitive Slave Act deeply strained relations between the North and South, as many in the North saw it as an egregious violation of their principles. The resistance to the act, often referred to as the Underground Railroad, took various forms, with citizens and even some law enforcement officials actively working to aid escaped slaves. Foreign Affairs and the Opening of Japan Amidst the tumultuous domestic issues surrounding the Fugitive Slave Act and the Compromise of 1850, Millard Fillmore's presidency was also marked by significant foreign policy achievements. One of the most notable of these was the opening of Japan to the Western world. In the mid-19th century, Japan was a reclusive nation that had maintained a policy of isolation for centuries. American and European efforts to establish diplomatic and trade relations with Japan had been met with resistance and hostility. However, Fillmore was determined to change this by sending Commodore Matthew C. Perry on an expedition to Japan. Perry's mission was a success, as he arrived in Japan with a formidable fleet of black ships. His diplomacy and negotiation skills convinced the Japanese authorities to sign the Treaty of Kanagawa in 1854. This treaty allowed for the establishment of two American coaling stations in Japan and paved the way for future trade and diplomatic relations. The opening of Japan had profound consequences, not only for American-Japanese relations but also for Japan's own transformation. It marked the end of Japan's isolationist policy and set the stage for the Meiji Restoration, a period of rapid modernization and westernization in Japan. Fillmore's role in this significant diplomatic achievement cannot be overstated. He understood the importance of expanding American influence in the Pacific and recognized the potential benefits of trade with Japan. His decision to send Perry on this mission ultimately had a lasting impact on US-Japanese relations and the broader international stage. Millard Fillmore's Leadership Style Millard Fillmore's presidency was a time of great political turbulence in the United States. In this environment, his leadership style became a subject of scrutiny and debate. How he navigated the complexities of the presidency, 
particularly during the challenging years following the Compromise of 1850, revealed much about his approach to leadership. Fillmore was known for his pragmatism and a commitment to preserving the Union. His leadership style was marked by a desire to find common ground and reach compromises, even when those compromises were deeply unpopular. This was evident in his firm support for the Compromise of 1850, which included the controversial Fugitive Slave Act. Fillmore's pragmatic approach, while aimed at preventing the outbreak of civil war, often put him at odds with more idealistic and uncompromising figures of his time. Abolitionists and anti-slavery advocates criticized his enforcement of the Fugitive Slave Act, viewing it as a betrayal of their cause. On the other hand, some saw Fillmore's leadership as a pragmatic and necessary response to the prevailing political climate. His willingness to tackle the divisive issue of slavery, though not always in ways that pleased everyone, demonstrated his sense of duty to the nation. The Know-Nothing Party As Millard Fillmore's presidency progressed, he found himself at the center of another significant political development, the rise of the Know-Nothing Party. This secretive and nativist political movement emerged during the 1850s, adding another layer of complexity to the already tumultuous political landscape of the era. The Know Nothing Party, formerly known as the American Party, was marked by its strong anti-immigrant and anti-Catholic stance. It sought to curtail the influence of immigrants in American society and politics. The party's name, Know Nothing, referred to its members' supposed secrecy and evasiveness when asked about the organization. Millard Fillmore, following his presidency, became associated with the Know Nothings. He was nominated as their candidate for the presidency in 1856, even though he had previously distanced himself from the party's nativist beliefs. His acceptance of the Know Nothing nomination added a layer of controversy to his post-presidential career. Personal life and interests Beyond the political turmoil and the complexities of his presidency, Millard Fillmore had a personal life and a range of interests that provided a more well-rounded understanding of the man behind the office. Fillmore was known for his commitment to education, a passion that had its roots in his own humble upbringing. He supported various educational initiatives throughout his life and, after his presidency, played a pivotal role in the founding of the University at Buffalo. His dedication to education reform and access to learning left an enduring legacy. In his personal life, Fillmore experienced both joys and sorrows. He married Abigail Powers Fillmore, who was well-educated and influential in her own right. Abigail served as the First Lady of the United States and was actively involved in White House events, despite her delicate health. Tragically, she passed away in the White House in 1853, casting a shadow over Fillmore's remaining years. Fillmore's interests extended beyond politics and education. He had a fascination with technology and was an early adopter of the telegraph, recognizing its potential for communication and commerce. His interests in various fields revealed a curious and forward-thinking mind. The Legacy of Millard Fillmore Millard Fillmore's presidency and post-presidential years left a legacy that continues to be a subject of historical debate and reflection. As we examine his life and contributions, it becomes apparent that his impact on American history is more profound and nuanced than is often acknowledged. One aspect of Fillmore's legacy is his commitment to preserving the Union during a time of great sectional strife. His unwavering dedication to the Compromise of 1850, including the Fugitive Slave Act, was rooted in his belief that compromise was essential to maintaining the nation's unity. This perspective, however, drew sharp criticism from abolitionists and anti-slavery activists. Fillmore's role in opening Japan to the West marked a significant milestone in U.S. foreign relations, expanding American influence in the Pacific and shaping Japan's own path towards modernization. Furthermore, his post-presidential involvement with the Know-Nothing Party reveals the complexities of his political journey, as he navigated the evolving landscape of American politics in the mid-19th century. Critiques and Controversies Throughout his life and beyond, Millard Fillmore's actions and decisions have sparked significant critiques and controversies. While some admire his dedication to preserving the Union and his contributions to American foreign policy, others vehemently disagree with many aspects of his political legacy. One of the most contentious issues associated with Fillmore's presidency is the Fugitive Slave Act. Many in the North, especially abolitionists, viewed this law as a grave injustice, 
compelling individuals to participate in the capture and return of escaped slaves. The enforcement of the act sparked protests, unrest, and a heightened sense of moral outrage among anti-slavery advocates. In the wake of his presidency, Fillmore's association with the Know Nothing Party also drew criticism. The party's nativist and anti-immigrant stances were deeply unpopular among many, and Fillmore's alignment with these beliefs has been a source of controversy in assessments of his post-presidential career. Moreover, some historians have criticized Fillmore for what they perceive as a lack of vision and leadership during a pivotal period in American history. They argue that his approach to the crises of his time, marked by compromise and pragmatism, failed to address the underlying issues of slavery and sectional tensions. The Millard Fillmore House Millard Fillmore's residence, known as the Millard Fillmore House, provides a window into the life and times of the 13th President of the United States. Located in East Aurora, New York, the house is a historical landmark that offers a unique perspective on Fillmore's personal life and the era in which he lived. The Millard Fillmore House, a simple and elegant structure, reflects the architectural styles of the early 19th century. It served as the home of Fillmore and his family during his formative years and early political career. The house has been meticulously preserved, allowing visitors to step back in time and experience the environment in which Fillmore lived. Visitors to the house can explore the various rooms, each of which provides insights into Fillmore's family life, his legal practice, and his political activities. The house offers a glimpse into the day-to-day -day life of a 19th-century American president, with period furnishings and historical artifacts on display. The Millard Fillmore House serves as a reminder of the president's connection to Western New York, and his rise from humble beginnings to the highest office in the land. It also underscores the importance of preserving historical sites to better understand the lives of notable figures in American history. His impact on American education. One of Millard Fillmore's enduring legacies lies in his profound impact on American education. Throughout his life and political career, Fillmore championed the cause of education reform, leaving a lasting mark on the nation's educational landscape. Fillmore's commitment to education was deeply rooted in his own experiences. He overcame significant challenges as a child in a poor family on the American frontier. This background instilled in him a deep appreciation for the transformative power of education, and a belief that it should be accessible to all, regardless of one's social or economic circumstances. As president, Fillmore played a pivotal role in promoting educational initiatives. His support for the Compromise of 1850, which included the admission of California as a free state, also contributed to the establishment of the University of California, highlighting his commitment to education. After his presidency, Fillmore's dedication to education continued. He was instrumental in the founding of the University at Buffalo, which aimed to provide accessible and high-quality education. His involvement in the establishment of this institution emphasized his enduring commitment to educational opportunities. Moreover, Fillmore's personal library, a collection of over 4,000 books, demonstrated his passion for learning and the dissemination of knowledge. This collection was later donated to the University at Buffalo, further cementing his legacy in the realm of education. The Last Years of Millard Fillmore The post-presidential years of Millard Fillmore's life were marked by a mix of personal and public pursuits. After leaving the White House in 1853, he returned to Buffalo, New York, where he continued to be active in public life and engaged in various endeavors. Tragically, in the midst of his post-presidential activities, Fillmore suffered a profound loss. In 1853, his beloved wife Abigail Powers Fillmore passed away. Her death left him in mourning and deeply affected him, as she had been his confidant and partner throughout his life. Fillmore's involvement in public life did not wane after his presidency. He remained active in political and civic matters, advocating for education and playing a prominent role in various organizations, including the Buffalo Historical Society. He also continued his association with the Know Nothing Party, which contributed to the controversies surrounding his post-presidential career. In 1856, Fillmore was nominated as the Know Nothing candidate for the presidency, although he did not win the election. This nomination highlighted the continuing divisions and debates within the party and the broader political landscape of the time. The last years of Fillmore's life were characterized by his enduring commitment to civic engagement and educational causes. 
Despite the personal and political challenges he faced, he remained a prominent figure in Buffalo and left an indelible mark on the community. Remembering Millard Fillmore The memory of Millard Fillmore is enshrined in various ways, from historical landmarks to academic institutions, and through scholarly reflection. While his presidency was marked by controversy and division, his legacy is remembered and interpreted in diverse and thought-provoking ways. One notable commemoration of Fillmore's legacy is the Millard Fillmore Presidential Library, which was established to preserve documents, artifacts, and records related to his life and presidency. This institution serves as a resource for researchers and historians, offering insights into the often overlooked 13th President of the United States. In addition to the library, various historical societies and museums, particularly in western New York, remember Fillmore's life and contributions. The Millard Fillmore House in East Aurora, as previously discussed, stands as a testament to his personal life, while the University at Buffalo continues to benefit from his contributions to American education. Historians and scholars continue to reflect on Fillmore's role in American history, particularly his pragmatic approach to the Compromise of 1850 and the controversies surrounding the Fugitive Slave Act. His legacy has been re-evaluated and reconsidered over the years, prompting new perspectives on his presidency and the complex era in which he served. Millard Fillmore in Historical Perspective Millard Fillmore's place in American history is a subject of ongoing inquiry and debate. As time has passed, historians have revisited his presidency and post-presidential career, seeking to place him within the broader context of American history. In many ways, Fillmore's presidency can be seen as emblematic of the challenges and complexities of the mid-19th century in the United States, his leadership during the Compromise of 1850, and the contentious debates surrounding the issue of slavery reflect the intense sectional tensions that would ultimately lead to the Civil War. Fillmore's pragmatic approach to politics and his willingness to compromise, even when those compromises were deeply unpopular, have been a source of historical analysis and discussion. Some historians argue that his choices were a reflection of the political climate of his time, while others critique his decisions on moral and ethical grounds. The issues of the Fugitive Slave Act, the Know Nothing Party, and the opening of Japan under his leadership have all contributed to the complex tapestry of his presidency. Millard Fillmore's legacy serves as a window into the broader historical forces at play in the mid-19th century. By understanding his presidency, his personal life, and his various contributions to American society, we gain insight not only into his character, but also into the nation's evolving political and social landscape during a pivotal period in history. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and share it. Your support is greatly appreciated, and you can find details on how to support my channels through PayPal and Patreon in the description box below.